our main issue was Europe's competitiveness. And uh, we first of all mapped our strength. For example, that we compared with our main competitors have uh, the longest life expectancy. We have an excellent education system that does not rely on the income of the parents. We have the lowest inequality between incomes, so a lot of social security. We have um, the most reduction, the biggest reduction of CO2 emissions, but we also know that we, are air, we have areas where we have to improve our um, performance. And the basis of our discussion was and is the invaluable work of Mario Draghi. It is a year ago now that I asked him whether he could um, produce such a report looking at the competitiveness of the European Union. It was in preparation for the next cycle of the Commission. It was very well received, as you've seen uh, over the last weeks and months since publication. And there is a broad consensus that this is the basis to discuss on and to move forward. What has increased is the urgency to deliver on the topics that are in this report. And it is absolutely impossible to describe it in full shape here, but uh, let me give you a slight um, uh, flashlight on three priorities. First, very clear from this report, we must close the innovation gap that we have with our global peers. Above all else, it's about diffusing digital innovation throughout our economy. We are very good in groundbreaking research, outstanding, but there is a deficiency in bringing the research results into a product and scale up the product on the market in the European Union. So there are still a lot of barriers to innovation and innovative startups that we see and that the report sees. So first priority must be to take down these barriers with simplification and speeding up. And as a first step, to cut red tape for these startups. We have already started to do that, but we want to go further. What the startups tell us, the innovative startups, they tell us that it is for them very cumbersome to go to the single market because they often face 27 different regulations they have to deal with. So we want to propose a 28th regime, which says that for these innovative startups, um, a single rule book, a simple and single rule book for the all, uh, whole of the European Union is accessible. It's voluntary. We have around 182,000 innovative SMEs. So this will give them access to the whole single market and give them pos the possibility to scale up. The goal is indeed to use the full single market to scale up. There are many more tracks that we have to work on on the single market. I will not go in depth now, but I just want to say that the letter report is very helpful here also as a roadmap for the way forward. The Commission will present in June its strategy drawing on uh, this report, and we will look at, at a better enforcement of the rules. We want to facilitate uh, most and importantly cross-border trade, innovation and investment. Speaking of investment, um, as Mario Draghi pointed out, we need more investment, specifically more private capital. It is essential to ramp up also the private capital's investment in research and development. So we will work on a European savings and investments union because lots of the savings, it was very impressive today to listen to Christine Lagarde, lots of the savings are not taken forward for valuable investments, but uh, in the bank or in cash. So they could, if there is a more conducive environment for these investments, um, go to a deep and liquid capital market and leverage the wealth of these private savings. One other task to look at for not only closing the innovation gap, but also for the second priority. And that is to have a joint plan for Com competitiveness, decarbonization, and digitalization. We have shown in the past that we can reduce our emissions while growing our economy, but we know that we have challenges to overcome. So in the first 100 days of the new mandate, we will propose a clean industrial deal. It will build on Mario Draghi's report and on the 10 different sector dialogues we have led 
in the past month to ask the industry with a commitment to 2050 climate neutrality, what is it what you need to get to this goal? How can we support you in getting there? And the sum of it will be in the clean, industri clean industrial deal. One major topic in it will be energy. Energy was a big topic today in the discussion too. We know that it was a huge challenge to overcome the energy crisis um, unleashed by Russia's war in Ukraine, but the energy prices are still structurally too high. They have to go down, um, and this is one of the tasks in, uh, for the new commission ahead of us. We discussed the topics grid and interconnectors and storage. Simpler, faster permitting for renewables will be essential here. The third and last priority I want to shed a light on is reinforcing our strategic security. We know that over-dependencies can quickly turn into vulnerabilities, and this is why stable and secure supply chains are needed to power the future of our economy. You all know the topic of critical raw materials. We know that by 2030, for example, at the end of this mandate, Demand for min some minerals will rise exponentially, so we need action now and coordination at EU level to secure this access. There are two ways to do this. One way is to diversify, so to have a trading partnership with other regions of the world so that we're not depending on one simple single supplier, but we have a diversified uh, uh, chain of uh, supply of critical raw materials. The second is even more interesting, and that is the whole topic of the circular economy. If you recycle, you do not need to get new critical raw materials. And if you look at the latest development in the startups for recycling, it's fascinating to see how much they can take out of a product that would go to waste normally and take out, again, these critical raw materials or other valuable resources and put them into the new cycle of production again. So way forward to, uh, to follow up. I will stop here. It was a very fruitful discussion about the Draghi report and the road map forward. And thank you for your attention.